Hello, my name is Julie Grimm and today is my second video in my mental health awareness video. I wasn't really on the phone, I just did that because I thought that would be kind of a cute intro. I'm not sure if that was cute, but you guys can let me know by leaving messages in the comment section. Anyway, so today is day two and if you want to know more about who I am, I sort of introduced myself in the first intro video so you can go back and rewatch that. But basically, I work in the public school system teaching mindfulness and social and emotional learning. I have a master's degree in neurobiology and I've been teaching meditation for a little bit over two years to the general population. Oh yeah, and I have a history of depression and suicidal tendencies. Awesome. So, today's video is um, what's depression? And why does it seem that depression, that more and more people are depressed nowadays? Okay, so what is depression? If you want a super Western medicine chemical understanding of depression, please read a textbook, call a doctor, or WebMD. I'm not your source, okay? But what, I'm, what I am going to offer you is my own experiential learning melded with my own insights from my biological uh, understanding of what's going on both in the brain and the body and even in other disease symptoms and disease states because I do think that there is relevancy in understanding how your whole body functions holistically. So um, currently scientists believe that depression is a neurological chemical imbalance. And I certainly believe that as well, to a certain extent. Um, but there's definitely an initiatory aspect of depression. And that, that aspect, it's not like somebody died, right? Oftentimes, that we wouldn't call that depression. That would be grief. Um, there almost seems to be no event. There's nowhere where we can point what caused the depression, which is why scientists point at the chemical imbalance. Oh, this caused the depression. Um, in my work with people around purpose, I find that often being disconnected from a sense of meaning in life, a sense of purpose, a sense of value, can enhance, cause, or exacerbate feelings of depression. Another thing that can cause depression from my own personal experience is numbing emotions. I work with uh, traumatized children, pop a population of traumatized children in the school system, and these kids have experiences that are totally overwhelming for their nervous system. When we have an emotional response to an event, it's physiological, right? Emotions don't just happen in our head. He saw red, I got so hot, right? You're hot and bothered for somebody. That's a that's a more pleasant experience. That's physically. You're feeling physically your emotions, right? So um, that can often be overwhelming, especially for kids. If they don't have the tools, if they don't feel capable or strong enough or big enough to handle or process an emotional response to something, then uh, it gets stored and locked away in the body. They freeze up. There's nothing to do with it. And similarly, when we encounter depression, sadness, existential despair. We're afraid to go into the darkness of those feelings, like what's down there? And so we numb, we avoid, we hide. That can be through sleeping all the time. It can be through drugs and alcohol. Chemicals, even like Tylenol has been shown to change your mood so that you don't actually feel the depth of that feeling. You just feel a little bit. Um, uh, eating, sex, TV, electronics. Those are all ways that we distract and avoid ourselves from really feeling the depth and core of whatever that is. And something that I think is so interesting is that, take for example, diabetics. Diabetics, you may or may not know, have a really hard time healing. Uh, they'll get a wound, a cut, a scrape, or something like that, and the wound doesn't heal fully. It takes much, much longer and oftentimes never heals at all. This is really problematic for them. Scientists wanted to understand, well, what's happening in this healing response that's so different? Super interesting. In a normal healing response, what happens is that the tissue gets super inflamed. That really inflamed state, like over-exaggeratedly inflamed state, 
uh, causes this whole big feedback loop and cycle to the immune system. Hey, we need healing machinery. Hey, we need healing machinery. Hey, we need healing machinery. Healing machinery goes to the state of the wound, makes sure all is good, and whoop, in a few days' time, there's wound repair. Now, in a diabetic, it doesn't hit that critical point of inflammation. There'll be low level inflammation, but it doesn't get super inflamed. It doesn't get super big. And so that whole feedback loop isn't triggered. That's kind of what I think about when I think about depression, right? Depression lingers. And something that I realized for myself is that part of the reason why it lingers is that we don't fully accept or dive into the depths of that feeling. What were, what would happen? if we accepted our emotional state when we were depressed and went there. Now that's very scary to do and that's why most of us don't. Um, but that's why in the third video for this series, I'm gonna introduce really practical tools that I use with trauma survivors and that I used with myself and I use with many other people to not only be present with their emotions, but maybe maybe to hit that critical limit, to really go to that depth so that the healing machinery can be triggered and you can move into a new state. You can move out of the depression and leave it to somewhere else. And maybe you do that through allowing yourself to hit that critical point, allowing yourself to more completely dissolve. I know that's scary, and that's why it's really important that we have friends and loved ones around us, that we share, we open up, and we communicate about what's going on for us. When I hold space for people in meditation, I help them go to deeper spaces, because when we know that somebody else cares for us and is there holding space for us non-judgmentally, even if it's not verbal, even if they're not doing anything else, they're just sitting there. Somehow, we find within us greater strength to be present with greater depths. And through that, perhaps, release, healing. All right, stay tuned. I hope you guys found this informative. And uh, please, I look so forward to any comments or suggestions or whatever you have to say, shares in the, the comments box. Um, this is such an honor for me to to share, to verbalize, and also a vulnerable place. This is new for me, but I, I really do feel like talking about this, raising awareness, and, and spreading my own personal understanding is important for me at this time, and I hope that it can serve you or potentially someone that you know and love. So thank you so much for tuning in. Take care.